This next section is going to be about mathematical induction. And what that is, is it's really a technique for proving a statement about natural numbers holds true for keyword every natural number. So this thing is always going to hold regardless of the natural number you pick. And that's kind of hard because you have to show it works for everything. You obviously can't feasibly test every single number is going to work. So before we actually get into the process of mathematical induction, let's work with some statements dealing with natural numbers. So we're going to be given this statement. We want to write what S4 is for the following and determine it's true or false. So this is telling you when you have Sn, you're going to take 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up to n squared. So if you want S1, it's just going to be one term. S2 would be two terms. S3 would be three. You get all of these new pieces. Each time you just add another term to it. And they're telling us that it's going to equal this piece over here. So to get S4, you're going to replace that value of n by 4. So you're going to start still with the 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. Your value of n is getting replaced by 4, so you go up to 4 squared. On the right-hand side, you would get 4, 4 plus 1, 2 times 4 plus 1 over 6. And our goal is we want to see are these equal to each other. So that gives you 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16, maybe, equals 4 times 5 times 9 over 6. And so if you do that on the left hand side, that's 30 does equal 30. So we're good. This is a true statement when S when N equals four. Now the principle of mathematical induction would help us show this statement is true for every single value of N. So if I summed up from one squared to 100 squared, it would equal the right hand side replaced by 100. Same thing from one squared to a million squared it's equal to the right-hand side with n replaced by a, a million. So this is called the principle of mathematical induction. So it states n is, Sn is going to be a statement involving a positive integer n. To prove Sn is true for all positive integers, you have to take the following steps. First one, you have to show it's true when you plug in n equals 1. Then assuming it's true for some arbitrary integer k, show the next value is going to be true, so the k plus 1. Combining these two steps prove that statement is true. So you showed it's true for 1, then the second step is going to tell you it's true for the next integer, which is 2. Now that it's true for 2, the second step tells you it's true for 3. Now that it's true for 3, the second step tells you it's true for four. And so it creates this domino process and makes it true for every single possible integer. Okay. So let's go through an example. Let's prove a statement involving natural numbers is true. So here this statement is you have the left-hand side is equal to this right-hand side, regardless of your value of n. So the first thing we want to do is S1 a true statement. And so that's going to start with just one term. You get n plus 2, plugging in n equals 1, just gives you 3. Does it equal 1 half times 1 times 1 plus 5? And so that tells you 3 is equal to half times 6. And yes, that's definitely a true statement. So it's true for n equals 1. Now the second step is the harder step. We want to show that if the statement is true for k, then it also must be true for the very next integer, k plus 1. So what I'm going to do is actually write these two statements, sk, sk plus 1. So sk is still the exact same thing on the left-hand side with n replaced by k. Right-hand side, just replace it by k. Now if you want the very next one, you still get all of the stuff before it, but you're going to add on one new term. And that's going to be this formula replaced by k plus 1. So I still get all the stuff before it. I'm adding on one extra term. And on the right-hand side, each of these k's gets replaced by k plus 1 as well. So this is what the statement says for the very next integer. So now if we clean this up a little bit, 
you still get this statement plus the next one, which would be k plus 3, is equal to this when you simplify it. And so here, this is that statement, sk. So I'm going to utilize that to my advantage. I'm assuming this is equal to this right-hand side. So we're going to assume sk is true, and we need to show this ultimate formula is going to hold. So to get from sk to the statement sk plus 1, the only difference is we're adding this term k plus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to both sides of this expression and see, do I end up with what I have over here? So we're going to assume sk is going to hold. So if I go ahead and add this next term, it's going to equal this piece plus this new thing I've added. So it's equal to the same thing plus k plus 3. Because this piece is exactly our statement sk. These two are equal to each other, and I'm adding this extra term. So all I have to do now is see if I manipulate this whole side, will I get the formula I have over here? So that is our goal. We manipulate this to see if it's the same right-hand side of that statement sk plus 1. So we've got our term. It's equal to the piece from sk plus k plus 3. So go ahead and distribute that k, add k plus 3. Distribute the 1 half, add k plus 3. Now we'll combine those like pieces. We've got 5 halves k plus k. That gives you 7 halves k. Now I've got to make it look like that right-hand side, which has this 1 half out front. So I'm going to go ahead and factor the 1 half out. And that leaves me with k squared plus 7k plus 6. And that factors really nicely into k plus 1 times k plus 6. And that is exactly the statement we have back here. So we've shown that sk plus 1 holds. So since it holds for 1, by this step it holds for 2. Now it holds for 2, by this step it holds for 3. So thus, sk plus 1 is true, so our statement is true by the principle of mathematical induction. So let's try one more. These really are best in practice, so take your time with your homework. There's a lot of other videos out there on the internet to help you out too. But we're going to prove this statement also holds by mathematical induction. So first thing again, I want to show this statement. When you plug in, n equals 1 is true. So all that's going to give you is this very first term. So s1 is going to be 1 on the left-hand side. We want to see, does it equal replacing n by 1 on the right-hand side? So that gives you 1 is equal to 1 third times 3. And yes, indeed, the statement is true for n equals 1. Now, we want to assume it's true for sk. Show it must also be true for sk plus 1. So again, I want to go ahead and I want to find those statements first, and then I'll do my manipulation. So the statement sk, nothing changes. You just replace the ends by case. To get the very next integer statement, you'd get the same thing plus one extra term by replacing this k with k plus 1. So this is the statement sk plus 1 on the left-hand side. The right-hand side will be the same thing, but k gets replaced by k plus 1. Okay. And so if we clean this up a tiny bit, k plus 1 minus 1 is k, and the right-hand side we've done nothing with. So this first piece here is exactly the same thing as this, which I'm going to assume is the formula here. So all we need to do is go ahead 
and add this new piece. So this needs to be added on that statement SK. So now here's our actual second statement. We're gonna assume for any positive integer that the statement SK is true. Then if I want the next one, I get the same pieces plus that next term added on. And so all that does is it adds 4K to the right hand side because this piece here is exactly our statement SK. This is what we assumed are equal. Okay. And now I just need to manipulate the right hand side. That's going to be one third times four to the K minus one third plus this new four to the K. Now, if you go ahead and notice, you've got four to the K and four to the K. So you can factor that out to get one third plus one times four to the K and then minus that one third. Well, that's four thirds times four to the K minus a third. And then combining these same bases, that's gonna be one third, four to the K plus one minus a third. And then you can factor out that one third to get this expression, which is exactly the right hand side of the K plus one statement. So that's the right hand side of SK plus one. So it being true for SK, adding that extra term to both sides makes the formula still hold for K plus one. So thus, our statement is true by the principle of mathematical induction. So with these problems in your homework, take your time. It's going to give you a guided step-by-step -step process to actually go through them. But this is the same repetitive process you're going to do over and over. Write those two statements, SK, SK plus 1. See how do I get from one to the other do some algebra manipulation to show the formula is still going to hold.